Счастливчик. Хотя, кто знает, что для тебя лучше. Пойдем посмотрим, что Сидорович за тебя отвалит. In 1971, two Soviet Russian authors, Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, wrote a science fiction novel by the name of Roadside Picnic. Roadside Picnic is a philosophical story about the aftermath of an extraterrestrial event called the Visitation. No one knew who the visitors were, why they were here or why they left, but in the aftermath of this Visitation they left a region or zone. The zone became a beacon for brave adventurers referred to as stalkers. Stalkers would visit the zone, observe strange and dangerous phenomena and search for special artifacts that were believed to have supernatural properties. Several years later, the Strugatsky brothers adapted the novel into a screenplay for the 1979 film Stalker, directed by Andrei Tarkovsky. At first glance, an obscure Russian novel might not seem likely to influence the global phenomenon that is the gaming industry. In this documentary, I will show how its story and themes have had an undoubted impact on several games in recent years, from the Stalker series, Mutant Year Zero, Death Stranding and many more. On the surface, the zone is an unremarkable piece of land. It's a sparse and deserted region that could be taken out of a great number of dystopian post-apocalyptic novels or movies. The zone is guarded by the military to prevent people entering, but people still come. In many ways, the zone can be compared in gaming terms to a dangerous dungeon, cave or castle. Stalkers are brave adventurers who put their lives on the line in search of lucrative artifacts, while at the same time having to investigate the unseen threats that the zone presents. In the 1979 movie Stalker, the stalker played by Alexander Kaidanovsky leads two men into the zone. One of them doesn't take the threats posed by the zone seriously and the stalker then explains his experience of the zone in this quote. The zone is a very complicated system of traps, and they are all deadly. I don't know what's going on here in the absence of people, but the moment someone shows up, everything comes into motion. Old traps disappear and new ones emerge. Safe spots become impassable. Now your path is easy. Now it's hopelessly involved. That's the zone. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is a first-person shooter developed by Ukrainian game developer GSC Game World for Microsoft Windows. The games are set in the area surrounding the Chernobyl disaster site referred to as The Zone, an alternative reality where a second explosion occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, causing strange changes to the surrounding area. In Stalker, you play as the Marked One, an amnesiac seeking a mysterious character within the zone. The background and some of its terminology are directly borrowed from Roadside Picnic and the movie Stalker. Unlike a traditional RPG, you don't gain abilities as you progress, instead the game uses a mysterious artifact-based system that allows you to augment your statistics. In Stalker, the developers try to recreate the invisible threats from Roadside Picnic via contaminated hotspots. These feature high radiation levels or traps that would cause near-fatal damage to any Stalker entering the zone. Following the success of Stalker, a prequel emerged, Stalker Clear Sky, which was released in 2008, and once more by a sequel, Stalker Call of Pripyat in 2010. In another interesting example of life imitating art, the term stalker has been adopted in post-Soviet Union culture. The term stalker is now commonly used in the former Soviet states to describe specialist tour guides. These guides illegally enter the vast exclusion zone around Chernobyl to explore the wilderness. My second example of roadside picnics gaming influence is Mutant Year Zero. 
Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden is a turn-based tactical role-playing game developed by the Bearded Ladies, based on the tabletop role-playing game Mutant Year Zero. Following a deadly plague and nuclear war, humans have largely become extinct. The few remaining survivors have begun to mutate, with a select group of these mutants being known as Stalkers. In Mutant Year Zero, Stalkers scavenge for resources in the wasteland referred to as the Zone. The one thing that Mutant Year Zero does extremely well is recreate that sense of sparse desolation that Roadside Picnic is synonymous with. As you explore the zone with your group, you uncover treasures, artifacts and hidden dangers. It may not utilise the anomalies from the book that we saw in the Stalker games, but in terms of recreating the atmosphere of the sparse and desolate wasteland, Mutant Year Zero is a big success. Whether it be the zone you explore, the stalkers you play as, or the beautiful way the game creates an atmosphere in keeping with the novel, Mutant Year Zero is a fine example of how elements of the novel have been used in gaming. Another game with heavy ties to Roadside Picnic is Death Stranding. Death Stranding is an adventure game developed by Kojima Productions. In Death Stranding, you play as Sam Porter Bridges, a courier who has to deliver supplies to various outposts in post-apocalyptic America. In several interviews throughout his career, the game's creator, Hideo Kojima, referred to the literary work of the Strugatsky brothers as an influence. The game is littered with elements that, when analysed, can be linked to the themes and ideas in Roadside Picnic. For example, Sam Porter Bridges, played by Norman Reedus, has dooms. Dooms is a condition that allows Sam to sense unseen dangers or see into the other realm. In a similar way, stalkers, due to their frequent visits to the zone, start to understand the hidden patterns, traps and dangers within the zone. Even their children are born with conditions such as telepathy or the ability to move objects with their mind. Dooms allows Sam to sense BTs. The BTs are an invisible threat only visible to Sam by way of his Doom's condition. He can sense their presence by way of environmental distortion, enabling him to navigate the treacherous hotspots and go safely on his way. In many ways, that description could also accurately depict the anomalies from Roadside Picnic. A series of ever-changing traps that are invisible to the untrained eye. The stalkers can sense them, as Sam senses the BTs by his Doom's condition. The game world in Death Stranding also has a similar feel to Roadside Picnic. A vast landscape, lifeless in its emptiness aside from the threats of the BTs and the occasional meetings with other mules as they try to steal your package, or artifacts if you will. The next example of Roadside Picnic's influence is a more complex one. In 2005, the Russian author Dmitry Glukovsky published his novel Metro 2033. In an interview with the Metro newspaper in England, Glukowski stated that the Strugatsky brothers' novels had heavily inspired his writing in Metro 2033. Metro 2033 was later adapted into a first-person shooter survival horror game developed by 4A Games. The game focused on Artyom, a survivor of a nuclear war who has taken refuge in the Metro Tunnels of Moscow. Metro 2033 was the debut title for 4A Games, whose founders had experience working on Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl at GSC Game World. Following Metro 2033 came Metro Last Light, and in more recent years the critically acclaimed Metro Exodus. The Metro games adopt many of the themes of Roadside Picnic. Exclusion zones with military checkpoints, invisible dangers on the streets of Moscow by way of radiation, as well as some mysterious supernatural threats. But the interesting point here is the Metro games are based on the Metro novels, novels that were written by authors who again were influenced by the literary works of the Strugatsky brothers, in particular Roadside Picnic. One final example comes by way of the cult classic Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium is a role-playing game that takes place in a city recovering from a war. You play as an amnesiac detective who has been tasked with solving a murder. Disco Elysium was written and designed by Estonian novelist Robert Kurvitz. In an interview with Rock Paper Shotgun, Kurvitz stated there were aspects of Disco Elysium he considered to be essentially Soviet, linking to the strong Soviet tradition emanating from the Strugatsky brothers' work.
When I first read Roadside Picnic, I immediately assumed it was written in the wake of the Chernobyl disaster. To my surprise, it was written 15 years prior to the tragic events in Chernobyl in 1986. It's remarkable how many parallels there are between the themes of the book and the aftermath of the incident. One is about a zone contaminated by a mysterious and deadly force, with the other being a nuclear incident that rendered a large region of Chernobyl a no-go zone. The zone has invisible threats that kill you. Chernobyl's radioactive fallout also created a zone with an invisible and deadly force lying in wait for anyone who entered. Both are comparable by the illusion of safety masking a malevolent threat waiting under the surface. The uncertainty that the zone brings is both terrifying but also intriguing. It's why the stalkers in Roadside Picnic enter the zone, because you're not supposed to go there but people always gravitate toward the places they're not supposed to be. This is where an interesting political element of the novel surfaces. During the Cold War, the Soviet state went to extreme lengths to control the general population. They adopted several strategies to prevent people from knowing what was really going on. As if you don't know what's really going on, you can never truly oppose it or change it. It was during this era that the concept of a shape-shifting enemy was born in Soviet politics. The concept of an invisible enemy is a terrifying thought that the Strugatsky brothers embraced in their writing for Roadside Picnic. The stalkers in the novel travelled the zone but always respected it, because even when you thought you were safe, you never really knew for sure. This part of the novel ties into another Russian political concept called non-linear war. The concept of non-linear war can be traced back to the Cold War, the era in which Roadside Picnic was written. Non-linear war is a state of constant flux, a shape-shifting battle where all sides are transient in their stance. You never know who your enemy is, what they're fighting for or why. The aim of a non-linear war was to control the masses, to create a political landscape where the people couldn't delineate between what was safe and what was dangerous. Now let me repeat that sentence and remove the word political. To create a landscape where people couldn't delineate between what was safe and what was dangerous. A sentence that perfectly describes the shape-shifting dangers of roadside picnics, the zone. One other thing to consider about how Roadside Picnic may continue to influence gaming is what the world has been through over the last year and a half. The pandemic has caused the world to grind to a halt. We've all been told to stay in our homes, stay away from people due to an invisible threat. A threat that mutates and changes over time to the point where we never really know where we stand, where is safe or what dangers lay in wait. The parallels to the novel are clear to see and over the coming years I'm sure other game developers will be influenced by Roadside Picnic, the Stalker movie and the games I referenced earlier. To conclude, Roadside Picnic is a novel about changing one's perception of reality. How a place, object or force can distort one's idea of what is real. When it was written, the Strugatsky brothers saw it as a work of social criticism, but over time it has become a piece of literature that has inspired all forms of art, including several computer games. The zone represents something different for all of us, whether it be the uncertainty of ever-evolving dangers or the potential riches waiting to be found. Those core values fit in very well with computer games and how they're structured. Add to that the eerie quality of Roadside Picnic as it prophesies an incident such as Chernobyl, leading to a no-go area akin to the zone. Roadside Picnic Zone and the Chernobyl incident have merged together culturally in gaming to create a wide array of fascinating and compelling game worlds. Although the novel and movie may not be to everyone's taste, one thing that is undeniable is that they both feature some very interesting concepts and ideas. Finally, there is a poignant quote from the novel which, for me, sums up perfectly what the zone represents. It was as though he were in a different world, 
A million odors cascaded in on him at once. The air became hard. It developed edges, surfaces and corners. Like space was filled with huge stiff balloons, slippery pyramids and gigantic prickly crystals. He had to push his way through it all, making his way in a dream through a junk store stuffed with ugly furniture. It lasted a second. He opened his eyes and everything was gone. It hadn't been a different world. It was this world turning a new, unknown side to him. This side was revealed to him for a second and then disappeared, before he had time to figure it out. This is Photography Gamer, signing off. Thank you for watching.